my old U. That was my first office, and now we're in this huge space here, about to move in. In this video here, I'm gonna go through all the different offices I've had and talk about growing a business, and stick around to the end of the video where I'll give you three key tips I've learned along the way. Welcome to the mobile office, also known as the Ute, typical builder's Ute, it's a little bit dusty, but this is pretty much where I've been working out of for the last year or so. When you're first starting out, working out of a Ute makes a lot of sense. It's dry, it's mobile, you can go from site to site, you can sit at site and make phone calls from your Ute relating directly to the site you're on. Hand three, I use this time that I'm in the car to call people. Because that's the other fun part of my job is that you have um, a bunch of phone calls to make every day. Yo, Ethan, it's Josh. For the Earthworks plan, we need a datum. Ah, uh, yep. And when you've only got one or two sites on the go, that makes a lot of sense. This combined with the dining room table and a laptop is a perfect starting out setup. Let's face it, you don't need a lot when you're starting out. You can do client meetings in cafes or on site. You can take prospective clients to an existing site and they love seeing you on site doing real work. Heck, you can even take your laptop to the library if you need to. And that served me really well for the first year of being in business. And then it didn't. I think it was the fact that I started doing more and more office heavy jobs, more and more diving into spreadsheets, pricing jobs, needing to collect all my data in one spot. Got sick of packing everything up, got sick of working at home. But the biggest thing that pushed me over the edge is I decided to hire my first employee, Sam. And so Sam doesn't want to work in the ute with me or at the dining room table. Sam needed a dedicated desk. So we took over a little space just over there. Let's go back and take a look at that office setup. This is all going to be my workshop area. And then on this side in here is going to be our office. And we're going to go new door over there just behind you and those bay windows are all going to get ripped out and replaced with new aluminium um, double glazing. Uh, building a wall in there, we'll do a couple of desks along there, a little meeting table there. Pretty much all we need because the majority of our guys will be out on site building houses anyway. So we're ready to line the walls. I've got a bunch of these linear oblique offcuts. They're about a meter long, you can't really use them for anything. So I've come up with this idea to minimize the waste, to minimize chucking these in the bin. We're gonna stack them along the bottom half of the wall here, and then the top half will be a birch fly sheet. Up on the ceiling, we're gonna keep the beams exposed and just spray paint that all white. This space was perfect for Sam and I. We had two desks and a table, and it served two workers really well. We had a cupboard to put all our stuff in. We surprisingly managed to keep it reasonably tidy. We were super excited, we were pumped about the growth of the company, and we just came to work every day fizzing to make videos. Should we make a video today, Sam? Yeah, it's Monday. Because Sam was in the zone with his headphones on all day, I could make phone calls without interrupting him, without him interrupting me, and it worked really well. It was a great setup. And Nicole came on board. I reckon we should talk about our, our, our weird project coordinated. Revealed. <laughs> 
So now it was Sam, Nicole and I. We had all three desks along one wall, still was working okay. Still had the room for the table, but starting to feel a little bit cramped, especially when we were having meetings. It started becoming a bit of a juggling act. We'd have to tell Nicole not to breathe or type while we're filming. <laughs> Sorry, we've just got the world's loudest notifications next to us. <laughs> And as you can imagine, the combining a YouTube channel with a building business led to lots of inefficiencies in productivity. It was still lots of fun and we were loving the growth and we also were embracing the starting up lean and mean. And I think that's probably one of my biggest tips that we're gonna talk about at the end. Crazy to think we went from the U to that space and it worked really well. Do you know what's even more crazy to think? Only 20% of you are subscribed. Guys, what are the other 80% of you up to? If you're loving these videos, if you're enjoying my journey, go ahead, click subscribe. It really does help encourage us out. So about a year into the three of us working in that space, we decided we needed to expand again. And we came up with a brilliant idea to build the studio over in the car park. We needed some extra space. We built an unconsented 30 square meter box and we made it really soundproof and we made it really nice on the inside. And the whole idea was to have a space to film videos and to have meetings and to give us some more presence along the street front. The permanent setup meant that we could do more intense voiceovers and so over the last year we've been doing hour long film sessions over there doing deep dives. Not only have we made videos for YouTube but we've also made a subdivision course and we're now using that space to kick off our relationship with BCITO where we do deep dives into the training manuals. All of that stuff couldn't happen if we were filming videos in a space that people were trying to work in. What's up guys? I'm here in the office today to talk about construction noise regulations. Gosh. Oh, shut up. Kind of work. The studio and the office setup worked well for about another year. And then we grew again and we got another employee. Elise came along. On top of that, our building team was growing as well. We had lots of builders and lots of managers and lots of sales reps coming and going, always walking through that door and the four of us crammed into this little box and all of us would stop working anytime anyone walked in that door. So that brings us up to today. We're in this awesome huge space. We're in the same building. We've taken over a large section and we've got about 100 square meters here now. We've got a dedicated meeting room there and we've got a dedicated sound booth over there. We're gonna have a really nice looking little kitchenette over there. Coffee machine. A must in any office. And a nice couch and coffee table over there. We've got room for eight desks over here and our famous whiteboard wall is gonna go up there. You've got to have the whiteboards, it's the way we run our company. I'm all for digital, but you cannot be like writing it up and seeing it in front of your eyes. Each one of these iterations has been like a couple of months to a year in the making. To go from the U to the first office, it took like six months to find the space, to work out the finances, to come up with a plan to fit it out and then to fit it out. And then the same for the studio. The studio planning was probably a year in the making and then it took another three to four months to build and that was another financial leap. On top of all that, we used to have this area here as building materials. We had a garage door over there and you could get in and we, we would just shove building materials on. And then we went and got the shipping container and created a yard space for all of our formwork and all of our waratahs and pegs and braces and all of that stuff we have just collected over the four years or so of running this business. But I've also collected a lot of knowledge and as promised, I'm gonna give you three tips if you're embarking on a similar journey and you are in one of these phases of growth. Tip one, start lean. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Committing to a, a ute and a laptop and a dining room table and meetings and cafes is a really, really good way to start. You should do that start for as long as possible. You wanna put all your energy into getting more contracts across the line. Don't get distracted with 100K office fit out 
at that phase until you know you've got the business and the consistency to back it up. Even with this new fit out, we are staying lean, we're doing as much as we can in house, we're hustling deals. We want it to look cool, we want it to feel amazing, but we don't want to spend a million dollars on it. Tip two, future proof. Once you've got through that startup phase, start to plan for three to five year periods. When we took over that first little box, I could see myself being there for two to three years, and so I committed to doing a nice little fit out, I committed to building it well, and I knew that I could get four desks in there, I knew it'd be a squeeze, but I knew that the company could grow from one to four people, and that we could use that space to make that happen. What you don't want to get caught up in is changing every year, because it's a lot of work, it's a lot of effort. You want to do it once, and then you want to know for the next two to three year period that that space will serve you well. Which brings us to this space. This space is our next five year plan. And tip three is don't bite off more than you can chew. Be conservative. Like, yes, everyone wants an epic office space. Yes, you want it to look and feel amazing. But remember that this space here is secondary to the work you do out there. And that everything you do here is to serve that work and to serve your clients. And so my client's work is not done in here. My client's work is done out on properties around the Hutt Valley. And so each step of the way, I have done a conservative little jump with two things in mind controlling my overheads I don't want to commit to a huge lease that then cripples the business and being conservative with how much I'm spending on the office fit out it's all about finding that sweet spot on the curve again you want it to be epic you want it to have enough room you want it to last three to five years but you don't want it to cost too much you don't want it to be an exorbitant amount of rent and you don't want it to suck up all of your time and energy at the expense of running your business out there.